gather to worship with expectations. God revealed in new and astonishing ways. God comes to us in real time. God comes to us in dreams. Sometimes God's presence is hard to take in, difficult to believe. Oh God, we long to believe. Help our unbelief. God is working in our midst, whether we are physically together 
virtually together, or spiritually together. God is present with us now. Come, let's worship God. Good morning. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning, know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Thank you to everyone who is joining us on our live stream through Facebook. Thank you to Rachel and Stephanie and the Davidson family who is here with us this morning. We are church, whether we are gathered or scattered, we are together in spirit. We're trying something new. We are adjusting to everything that's happening in our world today. I hope that uh, hope it all works. It may not. There may be technical difficulties. There may be some things going on. Feel free to leave comments and, and talk to us on Facebook. But know that there is a fairly significant delay from when we get when we get your comments to when you respond. So if there's a if there are any technical issues or anything like that, uh, it may take me a, a little bit to uh, address them. I think that's everything that I want to say is the introduction. Um, and so we, we have some great music that uh, Rachel is providing for us. And the, the tunes should be familiar. I hope that you can hear them in your head and, and sing along if you know the words. This was a hymn that we picked ahead of time um, before all of the changes happened. The hymn is We Gather Together. And as I said, we are a church, whether we are physically present or virtually present with one another. So even if we're not all in the same room, we're still gathered together. Last year, we began the process of discerning the vision and mission for the future of our church. And since then, we've been gathering together to hear and discuss each other's perspectives on what makes MCC unique and special in our lives and in our community. At the end of 2019, we aligned on a new mission statement. MCC invites all on a journey of acceptance, connection, meaning, and purpose through the worship of God and the service of humanity. Now, I really like this new mission statement because I think it encapsulates so perfectly why it is that we gather together as a church community. We're social creatures and being authentically accepted for who we are with all of our gifts and our challenges is essential to our full development and achieving the vision for, that God has for our lives. And connection builds on that. I've always been introverted, but even I need a community of friends to love, support, and even challenge me along the way. Meaning. In Twilight of the Idols, Friedrich Nietzsche pointed out that if we have a why to live, we can bear almost any how. We're all trying to figure out why we're here. And when we know that, we can live out lives of purpose. Lives focused on loving ourselves and each other intentionally and tangibly. At MCC, we know why we're here. And we live out our purpose every day through worship and service in our community and around the world. Now, in preparation for kicking off our annual stewardship drive today, we developed a proposed budget for the coming year. As we began to develop the narrative budget to better explain where the money goes, we decided to frame it using our new mission statement to show how the statement is more than just words. 
It is guiding how we minister to each other in the world in very real and concrete ways. Now, since we're not together this morning, you'll be receiving the narrative budget as an email and in the mail, and hopefully soon in person. And in the coming weeks, you'll hear from other MCC members about what our church and mission mean to them. I'm personally excited to be part of a church that takes its calling so seriously and to be surrounded by all of you as we live out our mission. With that, I'd like to, you to, I'd like to ask you to join me in the spirit of prayer for this morning's prayer of invocation. Holy and loving God, there's a great deal of fear in the world today. Fear of people who are different from us, fear of scarcity, fear of an illness that has rapidly emerged and spread around the world. But even when we walk through the darkest valley in the shadow of death, we know you are with us. As we walk these 40 days of Lent, remind us, Lord, that come what may, you are always by our side, comforting us and guiding our steps as we join with you to drive out fear in this world and fill it with light, healing, and peace. Remind us as we gather together virtually today that the connection we have with each other and with you is not virtual. It is something real, ever-present, and a constant source of strength. Make your presence power powerfully felt today and in the days to come. For we pray these words in your holy name. Amen. They know or to me they know to us. It feels in some ways like we've been preparing for this moment for years. Here at MCC, we learned the Holy Spirit handshake many years ago um, when an incredible woman named Barry Alter uh, taught it to us. And so, wherever you are now, we can still share a sign of God's peace. And so I invite you to hold your hand up to consider those who are around you, virtually and physically, to leave space for the Holy Spirit, to feel the Spirit coming through you, to take that Spirit and to bring it into your heart. The peace of God be with you all. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Dozma. I am the Minister of Youth and Families here. At this time, I normally ask any and all children of God to jump, come join me up front for a little lesson. Um, today, I am going to invite you, after the service, to pop on over to YouTube and check out our first ever online um, faith exploration workshop. Um, today, we're going to be learning about um, how God helped the Israelites when they were really scared and in a time of need. And um, Moses was able to part the Red Sea for them. And it's a great lesson to learn that um, God comes through for us. God is there for us when we, when we need God the most. Um, and um, at this time, we get to share something very special this morning. We have a dedication of our little baby, Alan. Um, so I invite the Davidson family to come forward, and uh, we have something special for you today. Would you guys come in between? Also trying to make sure we're all in camera. Uh, Let's all step over this way. Dear friends, there are different ways to acknowledge a child's spiritual journey. 
Some Christians have the tradition of baptizing infants, while others choose to celebrate baptism when they are older. Today we welcome Alan Davidson and mark the beginning of his faith journey through a baby dedication. This is also a moment for us to reflect on the promises that were made by us or for us as we began our own spiritual journey. This is a call to be renewed by the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, to remember that we are God's own, and to recommit ourselves to being an active part of Christ's ministry. Together, we are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. Today, we welcome this child into Christ's universal church. When we welcome a child, we are reminded that we are all children of God, and that we are all invited to be disciples. Jesus called us to surround ourselves with children, to listen to children, and to become like children. As we witness and participate in this dedication, we remember that we are part of Jesus' earthly ministry, and through Christ's resurrection and the glory of God, we too might walk in the newness of life. In this moment, we rise with new life walking together as members of Christ's body. Will you encourage your child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, Please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, we do with the help of God. We, we do, do with, with the help, the help of God. God. Do you all promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help him be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission to, in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church, so that he may one day affirm these promises on his own? If so, please say, we do with the help of God. We do with the help of God. And to our entire church, gathered and scattered, do you who witness and celebrate this moment promise your love, support, and care to Alan as he lives and grows in Christ? If so, please say we promise our love, support, and care. We, we promise, promise our love, support, and care. Alan, our final task in this dedication is to bless you. But you are a blessing to us. So you, so may you know how much God cherishes you through the love you receive from your family who stands with you and from this congregation who will always be there to support you. We dedicate you to God and we dedicate ourselves to loving you. Amen. Let's all pray together for our
Um, listen now for these words from Mark chapter 12. Once more, Jesus began to address them in parables. He said, a farmer planted in a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug out a vat, and erected a tower. Then the farmer leased it to tenants and went on a journey. In due time, the farmer sent a subordinate to the tenants to obtain from them the owner's share of the produce from the vineyard. But they seized the subordinate, who, after a meeting, was sent off empty-handed. Then the owners sent them a second subordinate. This one they treated shamefully, too. And they killed a third subordinate. So too with many others. Some they beat, others they killed. There was one more to send, the farmer's own beloved child. They will respect my heir, thought the farmer. But the tenants said to one another, here is the one who will inherit everything. Come, let us kill the heir, and the inheritance will be ours. Then they seized and killed the heir and dragged the body outside the vineyard. What do you suppose will happen? The farmer will come and destroy those tents and turn the vineyard over to others. Are you not familiar with this passage, passage from Scripture? The stone rejected by the builders has become the Is it lawful to pay tax to the emperor or not? Are we, are we to pay or not to pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, Why are you trying to trick me? Let me see a coin. When they handed him one, he said to them, Whose image and inscription do you see here? Caesar's, they answered. Then Jesus said, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God. This reply took them completely by surprise. Here ends our reading. May we be blessed with wisdom and courage for our interpretation. The farmer will come and destroy those tenants and turn the vineyard over to others. So if we assume that God is the farmer and we are the tenants, this is really not the Sunday to have a scripture about God destroying our way of life. So we often um, translate this scripture and, and you figure out that these metaphors are you know, about us and about God and about Jesus. The vineyard is prepared. The owner trusts it to the tenants. And the tenants create this way of life, and they get so hung up on it that they're afraid to lose it. They forget who it belongs to. They forget that it's not theirs, that it belongs to the farm. God has given us this world. God has given us this life to steward. And we've created all of these systems that make us feel comfortable. And now those systems have been disrupted. Work and school, business and commerce, and even church. And we're afraid. And we're not sure how to react. And sometimes we get angry with each other. We think only of ourselves and our own needs. We hoard toilet paper for some reason. And God sends us message after message. God has been sending us messages from 
throughout generations. Message after message that we've been distorting the purpose of our world, distorting the purposes of our lives, trying to remind us that it's not about us, it's about justice and mercy and humility. It's about loving neighbor and God and self. God keeps sending messengers. It's not the virus that God is sending. It's the messengers, the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, the scientists, the leaders who have to make tough decisions. It's not the virus that God is sending. It's the messengers. It's all of us. All of us when we demonstrate compassion to each other, when we choose knowledge over fear, when we use only what we need, when we understand each other's fears, when we protect the vulnerable, and when we lead with empathy. There's no doubt that these are tough times. And unfortunately, they're probably going to get worse before they get better. But we've been given the tools that we need to be good tenants, good stewards of this world, good stewards of this life that God has given us. We've heard the messages of love and justice and equality over and over again. And so we will focus our lives on mercy, justice, and humility. We'll follow the commandments to love God, love self, and love neighbor. May God continue to give us hope. May we continue to follow Jesus even as a scattered church. May the Holy Spirit fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that in the power of the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Amen. Fortunately, we've had lots of opportunity to record the choir. We have some of Jack Moore's fabulous pictures. We're going to take a moment now to listen to, to a piece that the choir sang a few months ago. And as you're listening to this piece, I invite you to, um, if you have any prayers that you'd like to lift up, any joys and concerns, to come. <laughs>
During your ministry on earth, you showed your power and caring by healing people of all ages and stations of life, from physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Dear Lord, we lift to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from COVID-19. The elderly and people with chronic health conditions. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty. Holy One, we seek your wisdom daily. Be with people making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, countries, and the wider world. Inspire and invigorate people, developing better tests to diagnose the virus, vaccines to prevent it, and protocols and communication to eliminate the disease's spread. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. Seeing any joys or concerns on Facebook. But I invite you now in the comfort of your home, knowing that you are surrounded and that we are all connected by love, to take a moment to lift up to God the prayers that are on your heart. We don't have very many announcements right now. Um, everything, all of our in-person meetings have been uh, postponed for a later date. Uh, I know some committees and groups are already starting to meet with, with Zoom and, and some other video conferencing um, ideas. I'm planning to do the same for our folk group this to one another. But let's just keep reaching out to each other. Let's continue to let each other know how much we love and care. Each one of us. So, um, and of course,
to support our election. Now go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak, help the afflicted. Honor all people, loving and serving God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and into life everlasting. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours.